You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. Let's get into Wellness Wednesdays with Claudine Cooper, who joins me now on the line. Claudine, how are you this evening? Woo, I'm doing good. It's hot out here, Mo. Burn it up. It was hot all day today, and it got me thinking about now that we are leaving July, moving into August, that's when summer is usually the hottest. And I think about your uh, community workouts, which are mm-hmm. outside. I think I think about elderly people. I think about people who are maybe just working out for the first time this summer. And I wonder what are some of the do's and don'ts when approaching exercise as we get to the end of summer? So for us in L.A., you already know this is when we heat up. Now, other climates, you know, you go to the Midwest, it starts to cool down August, September. But we can plan for it to be warmer than usual outside in the next coming two to three months. So what I usually tell people is obviously stay hydrated. That's a no brainer. Right. But also, if you have indoor options Use them. Let's say you go to a gym or you can work out from home. If it's too hot or you might be in midday sun, just opt for an indoor workout. When you say indoor workout, maybe I don't have all the machines. Maybe I don't have all the accessories. What does that include or encompass? Well, look. Nobody actually needs any equipment to work out. You can Ah. work out with just your body. You don't need to. These are barriers that people put up when they really don't want to work out. That's my, that's my unsolicited opinion, right? (laughs) But But the truth is for most of us, if we wake up in the morning, do some stretches, do some push ups, do a couple jumping jacks, just get our bodies moving. We will have a faster metabolism throughout the day, and that will help us burn as we go. It's not something where I think you need to necessarily dedicate a certain hour. I remember years ago, I read something that said, if you sit down for 12 to 14 hours a day, but you work out for one hour a day, you're not doing your body the justice it needs unless you're moving throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense because you can't be sedentary most of the time and expect that one hour to counteract all that sedentary behavior. Mm -hmm. I'm not a math major, but I get the math of that. But speaking of math, you often comment how You've been working in the gym since you were 18 years old. You are not 18 anymore. I'm not 18 anymore. And I suspect that all of us have to modify our workouts over the years and maybe over the months within a year. Does that make Uh sense? Oh, that makes perfect sense. And as we get older, you do have to take these little modifications. So a great thing to think about is what is the temperature that I'm exercising at? Now, now that I'm in the gym every single day, I'm seeing people who love hot yoga. I don't know if you've ever done hot yoga, Mo, but it's it's around a hundred degrees and you're holding these intense poses. So it's a sweat fest, right? But you'd be surprised. People of all ages are in there. So it's not always based on age. It can be based on level. Okay. Something else to consider because I have never done yoga, but I'm hearing more and more about the benefits of it as a way to exercise, not only as I get older, but to maintain my degree of flexibility and being limber and, and range of motion. So that is another great tip. Also, when you're doing your outdoor workouts, we talk about your free community workouts on Saturday and your online workouts on Friday. Do you intentionally, purposefully think about how you're going to craft a day's worth of exercises for people that you don't even know who's going to show up. Sometimes I do, but honestly, I feel like if I give people the option to tap out when and if they need to, I'm allowing them to actually listen to their own body's cues. And that's one reason I did bring up hot yoga because it's on trend right now. And I'm noticing there are people who really can't stand the heat for a long period of time. A hot yoga class is typically 40 to 90 minutes. And so in these 100 degrees, 
degree rooms, you have people that'll just walk out and that's okay. I feel like most of us have to listen to our limitations. So when I start a workout, I always give people the option to tap out of any exercises I'm doing, if the jumping jacks are too much, if running is not your bag, if being outside in the sun is, you know, making it feel difficult for you, you don't have to stay. I always want to give people the autonomy. Nobody's holding you hostage in a hot yoga class. I'm definitely not holding you hostage on Zoom. I'm not holding you hostage at the outdoor workouts, which by the way, I'm on hiatus for one whole month. I actually hey. make it to go see my family out of town. <laughs> well, let me just ask you this then. You are taking that hiatus. I wonder, is a hiatus then good for anyone else? Yes, you may say in a given workout, take a break. But what is it to be gained by, let's say, taking a week or two off? Ooh, see, I don't, I'm not into the week or two off recommendation. Ah. I'm not, yeah, no, 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 no. You're not going to catch me out here talking about take a week off, take two weeks off. Because what happens is people take a week off, turns into two weeks off, turns into two months off, turns into two years off. And then they're coming back to the gym talking about, oh, Claudine. So I haven't worked out for a couple years and uh, I want to jump right back into hot yoga. And, you know, that's when you really run into a person who may pass out. I had a woman pass out once in water aerobics, Mo. And I, look, these are the kinds of things that oh, over 30 years I've seen in my practice that people jump right into fitness. Boom, they want to give it their all 110%, but they've been out of the game for a year or a couple months. And, you know, you got to give yourself some grace and give yourself some time to reacclimate to these workouts. Talking about grace and acclimation, before I let you go, um, we started talking at the beginning of the year how people have their New Year's revolution, uh, excuse me, New Year resolutions, and then they start off strong and maybe, you know, peter out come March. But do you find some of the people who started off strong, maybe uh, tapped out in March or April, do they come back later in the year or do they start all the way over next December, January? First of all, we can call it a New Year's revolution because I'll tell you one thing. I've seen more people committing to working out in the last few months than I have in my entire 30 years in fitness. So clearly it's a revolution where people are now really taking control of their health and wellness, really finding the benefits of exercise. And I love to see it. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's telefriend to telefriend. I don't know. But what I can say is I see young people, Mo, in this this just warms my heart. I see young people in the gym really working out, dedicated to weight training, cardio training. So do the New Year's resolution people keep coming or come back? I can't tell you 100%, but I can tell you I've seen a big uptick in people who are working out right now. She is Claudine Cooper. You can find out all you need to know about her and what she does. Writer, fitness enthusiast, trainer. There's so many titles she has. But you can find <laughs> it out it all at ClaudineCooper.com. Claudine, always love to speak to you, and I'm sure we'll do it again next week. And we will. Good seeing you, Mo. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM640. And do you remember your first remote job? Or maybe you've never had one. My first remote job, and that's saying nothing of the pandemic, for the most part, we were in office during the pandemic for the most part. My first remote job was back in 2000 and I want to say it was around 2002, 2003. I was a remote producer for Ryan Seacrest for his American Top 40 show. He had just taken over for Casey Kasem. I bring that up because today a remote job is just par for the course. You, you have people who are working multiple full-time jobs just in a remote capacity, our whole employment landscape has changed in the wake of the pandemic. But it hasn't been good for everyone and it hasn't been good for every company. We talked about how some companies after the pandemic said, hey, you got to come back to the office. You got to at least work in the office uh, three days a week. And there were some Gen Zer millennials who said, no, I don't want to come back to the office. And there were others who said, yeah, I'll come back to the office. And we had this push pull this period of discomfort where at least the workforce couldn't figure out where it was going in the future. Now that we're a couple years even beyond that, we're 
seeing the long term effects on people who do remote work. A recent Upwork study found that in the next year, more than 36 million Americans will be working from from home. Well, not me. And that's an 87 percent increase from pre pandemic levels. I mentioned my first remote job working for Ryan Seacrest because I learned a lot of things about myself. And this study is saying that more people are working from home, but more people are experiencing loneliness and uh, experiencing isolation. They're not they're not um, under, they're not managing the time well enough for their own personal emotional well-being. That's something that I don't think people could foresee with remote work. I remember when I was doing full-time remote work back in the early portion of this century, I had to really train myself to have a work day. It would start at this time and it would end at that time. And then hours in between, I wasn't watching TV. So this is a different time in the internet. So you didn't have all the streaming. streaming. You didn't have the, the phone capabilities. You didn't have as many distractions back then as you do now. But I had to be very intentional with crafting out parameters on my day to keep me in the mindset of working. And if you don't do that, you will find that you just kind of lose days and you're drifting through life. And when I saw this story, it made perfect sense to me because if you don't have structure and order, and this goes back to our conversation last night, I'm super OCD, I need routine. I need boundaries. I need parameters. And without that, I'm just kind of lost. And if you are a person who's similarly constructed and you are not placing those self-imposed parameters and boundaries on yourself, you can just start drifting into this place of isolation and start losing contact with, with friends and family who have their own lives, who are going to work from, let's say, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., and you don't have that, and you find yourself becoming more and more isolated. It makes sense to me if only because I was not very good at placing those parameters on myself back in the early 2000s. Now, Mark, I know you've had a bunch of remote jobs, right? Not a ton, but I mean, I just finished, uh, we talked about uh, my video game that I uh, wrote the dialogue for that just came out. That was all remote. Uh because it was being made in Poland, in fact. And so, you know, the hours were like uh, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. to right. work on it, that kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, there are a lot of people now uh, that uh, they expect to be allowed to work remotely, which is, you know, reasonable since we're still in a pandemic. But um, it can be maddening. I mean, I, I keep joking with people that at my place... We, we haven't quite gotten to cannibalism yet, but I don't think we're far from it. It's reasonable, and, but a lot of businesses, and I know why they do this, they want to be able to put a finger on employees' productivity. And they feel that the only way they can do that is to have people physically commit to coming to a location and being in a place which is less conducive to watching movies or spending your time not doing work. Well, sure, yeah. sure. But there are multiple things going on at once. We also know now that calling people back into the office was a way to get people to quit, to, to trim the employment True. roles. True. So there's a bunch of stuff going on at once. And make no mistake, employers love to be in control. It doesn't matter how productive you are. A lot of the times they just want to see you. They want to have you in the building. And that's a whole other thing right there. Building rent. Yeah. Office space. Yeah. Rent. Somebody's got to get paid for all this stuff. The pandemic, if anything, showed a lot of companies that, hey, we don't necessarily need to have all this office space to be productive. We don't need to have all these offices and these cubicles and these and these desktop computers. If anything, we can um, uh, cut back on some of these expenses and maximize our actual revenue. And some companies went in the other direction and said, no, 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 we want everyone back in, in the office. So it depends on where you work. Now, in the entertainment industry, it's gone more to the remote end. You can get to your point, Mark, these writing jobs. I've done a lot of remote jobs, not full time, but I'm just saying like uh, gig jobs, doing voiceover work or you're doing narration work 
because the technology is such that it lends itself to it. Oh, yeah. And I do voice work as well. Uh, we've never really talked about this, but I'm constantly doing, uh, you know, auditions, taping auditions at my place. And, you know, there are setups that you can get if you don't already have one that give you a crystal clear connection at home. It's getting easier and easier to work at home. But it's really you got to examine on a case by case basis if it's legit for employers asking or demanding people to come back to work because every single one has a different reason for it. Right. Yeah, see, the only thing is, and this is what I think is being missed when I read this article, these are a lot of people who are saying that they are lonely, people who are working. This isn't necessarily about workplaces and, and the demand to come back to office. This is people being lonely. And I look at how many times we have seen demands for people to return to work only for them to be ignored, not here, just all across. So I'm like... It's interesting where you have a report that comes out saying people who are working remotely are starting to feel lonely. But you also have reports of people refusing to come back to work and get back into the mix and interact with people again. Uh, let me go back to what I was saying when I was working for Ryan Seacrest. On the surface, you think, yeah, work from home, great. And then you realize that there's a downside to yeah, it. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a drawback to it. Not only if you're not mature enough to handle it. You're less productive and it can impact just the other aspects of your life because I didn't have a formal work day. There were things which had to be done by Friday at a certain time. I could mess off the first couple of days of my week and then maybe work real hard on Wednesday or Thursday and then we uh, record the show for the weekend on on Friday. So you, I had to learn how to manage my schedule and that, uh, and because I didn't manage my schedule well, it had other uh I'll say consequences and in, mm -hmm. in my personal life, sleep schedule, um, just um, health and, and just my diet because you're just sitting around house for the most of the day doing whatever you want. And I think the, the a lot of I'll, I say young people because they seem to be more adamant about not coming back into the workplace than our generation. Young yeah. people are learning that, you know, just because you got what you want, there's not it doesn't mean that there's not a downside to it as well. And that's these 27s who are a part of this study, for the most part, who are now complaining. It's almost like, well, you got what you wanted. Right. But now <laughs> you, you you didn't know what all that was. Hmm. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. And I, you have to be a particular type person to manage the responsibility of remote work. For me, I needed to have a formal begin and end to my day where I don't care. I got up. I got in the shower, I sat down at the desk, did work from 8.30, 9 a.m. to about 5 p.m. Now, was I working the whole time? No, but it put me in the mind space, the head space of this is work time, and I was much more productive. I don't know if everyone can do that. I don't know if everyone does that. Well, we've all done what you're talking about, which is procrastinating until the very, very last second and then pull an all-nighter. I mean, that's the life of a freelancer right there. Uh, and so, I mean, to me, working at home is kind of, uh, it's good, but be careful what you ask for because you might get it good and hard. Absolutely. Ooh, good and hard. <laughs> good and hard. Oh, wow. Is that what you do working that, at home? Why are you going to exactly, make it weird? That's exactly right. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, for example, before we go to break, if you listen to our uh, 4th of July special from Chateau Les Mo, I have a fully constructed studio at my house. I can do everything in a broadcast capacity from my house. But there's something to be said for the job I do, radio, and the collaborative effort and being in each other's presence, which makes what I do even better. You wouldn't know what to do if you couldn't come into the office and be near me. You wouldn't know what to do. Oh, no, I, I would know what to do. <laughs> I would know what to do. I don't think you would. My life would be so much better. Look at the time. KFI AM 640. We're live everywhere in the iHeartRadio app. And we have a very, very unfortunate Comic-Con update when we come back. And it has to do with human trafficking. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly On Demand from KFI AM 640. On Monday, we told you about some of the news which came out of Comic-Con, some of the major announcements, some of the surprises. But we didn't tell you about this. Authorities arrested 14 people and rescued 10 victims in a huge human trafficking sting at the San Diego Comic-Con convention this past weekend. 
The operation took place Thursday through Saturday. And if you don't know, about maybe 135,000 people may attend annually at Comic-Con. Law enforcement personnel posed as sex buyers to identify and contact potential trafficking victims and arrest their traffickers. They also posted undercover ads soliciting sex. Also included in the victims was a 16-year-old, and all this information comes from the state attorney general's office and the attorney general, Rob Bonta. I don't know about you, Tuala, but when I read that there was a sex trafficking uh, ring or you know there was sex trafficking going on at a major convention, I was not in any way surprised at all. No, I've actually seen um, individuals. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. In cosplay, um, soliciting sex around the San Diego Comic Con campus, not at the convention, but when you go into like town, gas lamp. Gas lamp. I've, I've been out there. I've left the convention late, and I have seen sex workers, for lack of a better term, soliciting while dressed as characters. I've seen it. And so I said to myself, aha, the trade has made its way to San Diego Comic-Con. Why do you think you were able to identify it? What stuck out to you? What reference point do you have? From all of my time working in the music industry and having actually witnessed individuals bringing talent from, say, Los Angeles to Palm Springs, from Los Angeles to Miami. Wait, that's across state lines. That is across state lines. That's trafficking. From Los Angeles to Las Vegas, trafficking. I have witnessed it. I have actually seen individuals who work within street team promotion departments bringing talent across state lines for the purpose of entertaining DJs and clients and the like at various events. In my time in the music business, I have seen this play out at every single convention. There was Jack the Rapper convention. There was BRE, which is Black Radio Exclusive. Uh, there was Urban Network. There was Impact. Every single music convention, and that says nothing of the other just um, – Events around the yeah. music industry, yep. which weren't actual conventions, there was always that element there. Why? Because you had powerful people, you had wealthy people, you had it was the proximity to power and wealth which brought this element out. And it's the same if you went to the Super Bowl. It's the same if you went to NBA All Star Weekend when it was here in Los Angeles. So the fact that it appeared and it was going on at Comic Con, where you have Heads of studios, you have very powerful, influential, wealthy people there. Celebrities surprises me not at all. It put it this way: I wasn't surprised, and I know law enforcement wasn't surprised because they knew exactly where to look. This sting is is brought about because of reports of it happening, of individuals seeing it. Any convention, I don't care if it's a boating convention. You will see individuals plying their trade on the mattress. Well, that's the oldest joke in the world. Like whatever convention you have speculating on the kind of hookers that are going to be there for it, right? Oh, wait, wait. That includes the RNC. A couple of weeks ago, they arrested folks. Oh, of course. Every convention. Every, every single, single one. one. And when they have the DNC, they're going to catch people there too. Yeah. Right. That's that's old old style comedy material. But I got to tell you, I've, I've gone to maybe, I don't know, 10 San Diego Comic Cons. And I've never once, I mean, you know, people hook up there, but I've never once had a moment where I was like, hey, what's Wonder Woman doing turning tricks over there? That's not what that golden lasso you know, is for. I'm just telling you, Mark, you, you may not know attention. what no. to look for. Yeah, no, yeah. I look, guess not. Anywhere I go, I don't care what city I go, I look for the quote unquote hood element. I don't care because that allows who looks me out to of place? stay. Yeah, who looks out of place? It's how I stay safe. I want to go and see 
where the hood is so I can know what element I'm looking out for when I'm walking around downtown San Diego after hours when I'm leaving because I'm not just going to the Comic-Con. I may want to go to a spot afterwards and you have to know your environment. And when I see when I see it, I know it. When I see pimps in play, I know what they're doing. Well, there, there are two things. There, there are those individuals who you refer to as talent who will be on the street, but also at conventions when you have the hotels, you will have a, a higher clientele and a, and a higher priced uh, talent worker who will be in the hotels at the bars. We saw it when we were hope we were. Uh, it was after we were what. <laughs> It was after you secure the interview with um, the creator of Samurai Jack, um, yes. Gennady Tartowski. Tartowski. Mm -hmm. After that, we went over to the bar area that was over, there, and we were actually waiting for uh, the, I think it was the Namath interview, or there was another interview we were named. That, that was Joe Namath. Joe Namath. Joe Namath. Same Namath. day. Yep. And we went over there, and I could see the talent at, at the, the bar, bar. I remember working now. their magic because we were cute. waiting over near the bar. What were they dressed like? Not they were dressed scantily. like talent. Right. <laughs> they were dressed like, hello, I am here to advertise my wares. I would hope that the pimps at least dress like Doctor Strange because he's he's got a look going. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not that. No. The cloak? No. The cloak of levitation? They're not looking like Bishop Don Juan. Yeah, they're, they're, not, out, they're not out there with gold rings. You know? <laughs> no. Where's my? No. no, no, no that no, is no, a no, fancy no. eye of Agamotto you've got around your neck there, <laughs> sir. <laughs> no, it... it, it Ron O'Neill was not walking around. No, it okay? was not. Oh, not I, I would pay good money for that. Okay. <laughs> Be careful. Pay what? For what? Well, Ron O'Neill's dead. Oh, so, okay. I you mean, pay good money to see Ron O'Neill. Uh, yes. I thought you were talking about paying for something else. Well, no, no. That's not. I mean, <laughs> how do I say this? I'm not get, <laughs> how do you say it? <laughs> I'm not get thrown off the air. Um, I honestly, as a, as a comic book pro, not a pro, <laughs> but as a comic not book a pro. Not a pro. I, I have never seen such a transaction take place in all my years going to comic -Con. Okay, let me tell you what to look out for. Please, please. Mismatched interaction at the bar. You can see a guy talking to a woman who's clearly not in his league or sexually dressed that's in a way every where... Every man at Comic-Con. No, yes. No, no, okay, yes, that's yes. the whole point. And you're seeing that they're having a conversation which is lasting longer than it should ever last. You mean the negotiation? Correct. <laughs> the the lore, the the Venus fly trap yeah. catching their prey, like they, they all have, of that. You see two people, it's like they have no reason to have any type of conversation longer than 30 seconds. Okay, and, and obviously the, the talent is there waiting for someone... Air quotes. Any one. Someone with a backpack on and a shirt over their rotund stomach that is not fitting, sweat streaming down their sides, probably greasy hair. They smell like Hall H line and they're oh, and they got some, oh my god. And, and they got mean, some money from the ATM. You're, you're so you're so pure you're so pretty. Oh, I can't believe you're talking to me. I mean you're He's a talking, cartoon. He sounds like a cartoon character now. I'm just saying. Listen, this, this is what these white people don't sound like that to Walla. I gotta go to comedy. That was Mark Ronner. That was Mark Ronner. Mark Ronner said that. I didn't Ronner say that. Yes, you do. There, but just, there's certain things that I just noticed and I don't react to because it's like convention. Yeah. Yeah. It's at every convention. You just can recognize the pros and what they're doing and where they post up. And it's always especially how they like, post. Yeah, it's like like dinner time. The people are kind of slowing down for the evening. People are starting to drink more. They're more open to suggestion. Uh, you know, they're spending money at the bar. I mean, when you see simple. when you see these ladies walk up and start flirting and offering right. these individuals buy them a drink, it's like okay. Here it comes. Here it comes. And police, we're not telling you anything that the police already don't know. They know exactly to look for the same things that we're talking about right now. If bad girl wants your ATM card, it's she's probably a pro. Well, you know, the, the more elaborate car, uh, costumes, you're probably safe. The more elaborate ones, because you can tell they put the time and money into them. This That's requires it. further study. Someone who just comes with a mask on <laughs> right. and, and next agree. to nothing right. else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't get caught out there, Mark. Okay. Next year. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Y'all really didn't know this was going on at Comic-Con and other conventions? Honestly, I, you didn't know? I feel like I've said enough. Let's do the news. <laughs> 
You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. And yeah, just to put a pin in that Comic-Con conversation, just know there's so much we want to tell you, just can't tell you. You'll just have to read between the lines. Tawala and I, our time in the business, we've seen some stuff. We've done some stuff. We can't tell you all of the stuff. But uh, yeah, when I'm, we saw that story about Comic-Con, it's like, mm-hmm. It, I'm actually more surprised that the bust wasn't larger and more frequently. I, I'm actually surprised that more people were not caught up in the net. That's the only thing that really surprised me. And anything else you want to know, I can't tell you. You have a Doctor Strange outfit at home? No. Nope. No? Nope. Nope. There is a reason why I've never been arrested. Yeah. Because I know what to steer clear of. I'm being serious. And, and, and if you're walking through a convention and you see talent walking around, go the other way. It doesn't matter how many times we have been to Comic-Con. I have literally watched the talent work. Um, one year, there was one young man who worked with us down there. We no longer have a KFI street team, so it doesn't matter. Street he team. See, he won't see us tomorrow. Those people uh, hang up the people, flyers yeah, and, and all that kind of stuff. stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, I watched him get, um, ooh, how do you say? Um, I watched him get Renegade. roped up, caught up with some talent. That's a pitch meeting at, in Comic-Con terms. <laughs> it was a pitch, all right. <laughs> it was Pitching a pitch. and catching. Can we say that? Yeah. Uh, somebody pitched a tent. Yes. This is a baseball game. The Dodgers are on. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Let me switch gears very quickly before the end of the hour. and We go to the viral load with Tiffany Hobbs. Got to let you know, from Dawn Patrol to Sunset Sessions, the U.S. Open is summer in Southern California. The Lexus U.S. Open of Surfing, presented by Pacifico, returns to the Huntington Beach Pier this Saturday through Sunday. All weekend long, you can enjoy music on the beach, food, shopping, and more. Visit WorldSurfLeague.com and Eventbrite for event details. You can also catch Tim Conway Jr. live tomorrow in Huntington Beach from 4 to 7 p.m. at BJ's Restaurants and Brew House right on Main Street. You know where it is. And we'll probably see you on the sand this weekend. And something else we got to let you know, tomorrow... On Later with Mo Kelly, we have a very, very special conversation and giveaway. Did you know that Ringling Brothers is back and it's coming back in an altogether new way and it's coming back to Southern California? The music filled journey is bursting with catchy rhythms, beats, songs and laughter that will have audiences clapping, tapping, singing and, and and just enjoying it together with action everywhere. Audiences will see never before seen stunts, acrobatic displays and comedic acts from a cast that includes 75 performers hailing from 18 different countries. And you know what? We'll be giving away a family four pack tomorrow night on later with Mo Kelly. Yes, Ringling Brothers is back, and we're going to make sure that a family of four gets the opportunity to experience it. That's tomorrow night, and you know you have the Lexus U.S. Open of Surfing Saturday and Sunday, so keep it right here. KFI AM 640, we are live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Ignorance is bliss. We have zero bliss. (laughs) Completely blissless. KFI. KOST HD2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live.